Um, okay. So we have Wendy Joe Spencer on the call tonight. Wendy and I met in San Diego in, uh, in leadership. So in October, my, my events all, all mixed up. So we met in a bar, I think, <laughs> at leadership. <laughs> um, and, whoa, sorry, that was really loud. And I got to know her and I was like so impressed. And I was like, you need to speak on one of my calls. I would love to hear you speak. And I just, hold on, I'm pulling up your info now. So she is a, um, my computer is being, give me one second guys, sorry. Okay, so she is an elite coach this year. She's a six star diamond in her first business center one star qualifying in her second. She's a six figure earning coach at 17 months in the business. She was earning, she's earning six figures. She's been a coach for 26 months. So a little over two years and she's a success club five legend and a success club 10 all-star. Not only that, but she is a mom of three and I just got myself lost from my zoom chat again. I don't know what my computer is doing. But I'm going to have her take over because my computer is being annoying. And I'm excited for you to share. Sorry, this is so unprofessional. Um, but she's going to share with us her top tips for 2016. And I'm just mute. Go for it, girlfriend. <laughs> hey, Lindsay. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me on. I always feel like, should I really be talking on these calls? You know, it's so weird when you're, you've only been doing this for two years. But I guess um, I have a good story in that sense. So whenever anyone gives me excuses about why they can't work this business, I tend to have um, some pretty good examples of my own about why they can. So that's why I also wanted to talk to you because I know as a mom, it's really easy. And even if you're not a mom, it's really easy to think of all these other things that can kind of happen in your life that could hold you back from being really successful. And in general, they're all just excuses that if you write them down, you can throw them in the garbage. That's kind of how I progress with things that come up in my life. Um, I'll tell you more about my story. But for example, just in the last six months, I've become a single mom to three children under four, and I also completely ruptured my ACL. And in those six months, I also qualified for elite and had my highest paychecks yet. So, and I bought a house. So obviously that's just the last part of the story, but the beginning part of the story is even more exciting. So I'm gonna get started with my um, slideshow here, and then we can kind of go from there. So you guys, I'll be kind of throwing a lot at you. So be prepared to take some notes. Otherwise, we'll, and then at the end, of course, I'll answer any questions you guys might have. But, okay. Can we all see what's going on here? One second. Let me make this small and then we'll play this again. Okay. So be here in one year. I kind of went through and I did something similar for my team. I tweaked this a little bit for your team call just based on some things that Lindsay said. But I think the biggest thing for making 2016 your, your best year yet is um, really just to make your mind up. And being on calls like this are kind of step one to saying, I'm going to make this even better than last year. I'm going to kind of exceed any expectations I may have set for myself. So here is me. Hi again. Um, my children now are one, three, and five, but I had three babies in four years, originally from Michigan. But the last two years, I was living in the state of Wyoming, like literally in the middle of the mountains, population 75. And my then husband, um, was working 100 hours a week and taking like a half day off every two weeks. So I literally was living in the middle of nowhere with a one and a two year old. And my friend contacted me and she said, you should do this program. And I was a college athlete and I was still hanging on to 15 to 20 pounds of baby weight that I couldn't really get off of. And I told her, no, I'm a runner, I'm an athlete, I don't do those home workout programs. Um, 
But then I saw she was kind of loving it. So I said, okay, I'll try it. What's the worst thing that could happen? It just gets dusty, right? So I tried it and then I refused to try Shakeology because I was a nursing mom. I was actually tandem nursing at that point. Um, and I refused to try it because I thought it was all nasty junk, right? Like all shakes are gross. And then once I finally researched the ingredients, I said, okay, I'll try it. And I signed up to be a coach just for the discount. And I knew that um, their dad would get mad because I was spending $100. Like we were pretty stretched on just one paycheck. Like running a cattle ranch is in no way extremely lucrative. It's rewarding, but not lucrative. So I knew he'd be upset with me. So my goal was like, okay, I'm going to make $100 a month. That's my only goal. And then I found out a week later that I was pregnant with my third. So living in the middle of the mountains, three children, no community, because everyone there is an older rancher, no children around us. The closest grocery store is an hour away, like literally a hundred years ago. <laughs> that's how we were set. So that's how I started my business. And my business kind of took off while pregnant because I was just sharing what I was doing. Like you kind of just be yourself, right? You have to just commit to, hey, I'm going to share my journey. And that's how you attract people that are like you. That's why I have the, your vibe attracts your tribe. You can go through that progression. You don't have to be in perfect shape. You don't have to be in a Mecca of health and fitness people. All you have to do is be willing to share. And that's when, you know, you find people who are just like you. I'm sure you hear this a lot, but my journey has been such a progression to where we are now that I really make sure to encourage all my coaches that just have to be transparent with your strengths and your weaknesses and your growth as a person. Okay. So number one is to get stubborn. You have to make your mind up. You have to look around to everyone on this call. You have to look at, see other people at events that you go to, and you're going to say to yourself, I'm going to be here next year. I'm going to be here in three years. I'm going to never quit on this. Because if you say that and you really believe it, no matter what, you're going to be there. You're not going to quit when it gets hard. You're not going to quit when things happen in your life. Um, you're just going to keep moving forward. And then the biggest thing for me, especially with each year, you have to really focus on just finding five. If you're not, um, there's a really good book I'm reading. It's called the 45 second napkin presentation, but the mentality is all you have to do is find those five people, five people that want to run with you. Obviously it's not always easy to find those five, but once you find those five, we call them your gold ships. Those people are the ones that are going to be exactly like you. They're making their mind up. You don't need a hundred people. You really only need five people who are a lot like you who are saying they're not going to quit and this business is going to change their life. The next thing you have to do is fall in love with your customers and coaches. It's really easy to get caught up as a coach with your progression, with our products, with how wonderful Shakeology is and things like that. And I'm not telling you not to share that, but the bigger focus for you has to be how much do you kind of love your tribe? How much are you giving to your customers? How much are you really taking those coaches in and saying, we're in this together? You know, we're running together. You need raving fan customers. That's something I'll talk about later. But you, that you have to kind of fall in love with that process of making sure to give them more than they expect. Another thing we like to talk about a lot is being a coach, especially for the first six to 12 months, is like running up an escalator. You are like running and running and running and running, and you feel like you're not getting anywhere sometimes. But with that consistency of three to five posts a day, doing the three vital behaviors, but still running up that escalator, it kind of then starts to happen. You get closer and closer and closer, way up to the top, and then you can kind of just ride it a little bit, but you're still being consistent, so you're still climbing on that escalator. And that timeline of those first six to 12 months of running, people then see that you're in this and you're not going to quit. So those first six to 12 months, then those people see, okay, six to 12 months, she's been doing this, okay, I'm finally ready. And then it takes them six to 12 months of running up that escalator. So to think of the timeline of really those first 12 to 24 months until your business truly takes off is the mindset you have to have. It can't just be like, I'm gonna do this for a few months and if nothing happens, oh, not too much for me, right? And especially, as a busy mom, you feel like you're running up the escalator anyways, but it's something that you just say, okay, I know what my priorities are and they are my family and they are this business and I am making time for both. It's making that decision. 
And then the other mentality, I'm a big Tony Robbins fan, when you'll hear more about that on this call, but he calls it the can I. And you should write those four letters on and you should post them wherever you can to kind of snap yourself back into that reality of constant and never ending improvement. Because no matter what you do, you know, it can be a really terrible day. You can go through some struggles in your life. But if you have that mentality of constant and never ending improvement, your business will be in a state of constant and never ending improvement also. Okay, so this is big, especially as a mom. You also, you have to almost become, a slave is not the right word, but so regimented about what you know you need your routine to be to make your business move forward. One of my top coaches on my team, she's a three-star diamond in, I think, yeah, almost 18 months she's been, she'll be a three-star. She um, is a mom of four and she works full-time as a teacher and she also coaches, coaches two sports teams. And she's built her business exceptionally fast because she spends one hour every morning. She gets up early and she really has grown her business to where it is in about an hour, but she is so focused on that hour that nothing will distract her from that. A book I just finished that I highly recommend for everyone. I recommend for your new coaches to be doing. It's called Miracle Morning for the Network Marketer. If you haven't read it, please read it. I personally, like I said, I'm a really busy mom, so I listen to all my books on Audible. And if you feel like you can't read, this is the best way to go about it because then you can listen in the shower, you can listen while you're doing dishes or laundry or while you're driving. And whenever you start to feel like your business maybe is getting a little plateaued, you have to dig in to your personal development. And the big part of Miracle Morning that they like to discuss, it's called SAVERS. So SAVERS is an acronym for Silence, Affirmation, Visualization, Exercise, Reading, and Scribe. So what he says in the book, what the author says is, number one, set your alarm for a time where you know you can get these things done. I'm personally a stay up late kind of person. Like I can stay up till midnight, one, two in the morning, but I'm realizing as I get farther along into this business that I have to get up early to get things done. So that alarm has to go off at five and I have to get up. But now, but because I, A, I'm a single mom, B, I'm still a nursing mom and I have three children by myself, it's not always easy. Like I usually have someone in bed with me at some point in the middle of the night and my other baby's tea, my other baby's teething. So there's always something. But if you put your phone across the room, this is a trick in the book, then you have to get out of bed, especially if you have a little one sleeping with you, then even faster you have to get out of bed. So once you get out of bed or at least you sit up, that's when you sit in those few moments of silence. Just take those deep breaths, kind of recenter your mind, get into a place of gratefulness. And then you're going to move through your affirmations and visualization. My affirmations, I just went through a Tony Robbins program. And so I can tell you my seven, you can kind of laugh at them, but they need to be something that gets you excited. You can't be like, I'm a good mom. Like that can't be your affirmation. While that's nice, that's not something that gets you juiced, as Tony Robbins says. So my seven, and you can laugh at me. I'm totally cool with that. I laugh at myself about these. Um, are my three personal ones are to be master or mistress, I guess is the right way to say it in the female version, but that sounds goofy to me. Master of the home, giver of hugs and giggles and tickles, and just basically that organization aspect also. And then my other personal one is called physical prowess, <laughs> which seems silly also, but if you can kind of see yourself in that place, you know, where you feel powerful and confident about your physical body, then that's what the prowess part of it is. And then my third one is travel guru and, or financial guru and travel wizard, which again, seems really silly, but that's what I want my life to be. I don't want it to be filled with just things. I want it to be filled with experiences for my family and for me, and to never have to use that excuse of, you know, being a single mom, that that's why we can't do things. So then my professional ones are um, empowerment of my tribe. Think of it in the biggest sense that you can. Um, the next one is raving fan customers. You don't want your clients to just be happy. You want them to tell everyone about what a wonderful experience they had. My other one is um, 
coach recruiting rock star, <laughs> which seems silly. But again, that's kind of that process that I think through with it. And then, of course, I'm like blanking on my seventh one right now. But, uh, oh, I remember what it is. I, it is be a spirit and soul magnet for God. So just kind of being able to attract and be that light for good. And you can put that in any faith base. It doesn't have to be a Christian thing for you. But just I want to attract people that are like me, that want to be filled with that light. So then you go through those things, your affirmation and visualization, where you see yourself in those places that you want to be. If you want to be walking across stage, then that's what you have to see yourself doing. If you want to build a new home, you have to be able to put yourself in that home and look around and say, okay, what does it look like? What does it feel like? Exercise is the E. Obviously, this is something we should all be doing. I personally just had surgery two and a half weeks ago on my ACL, so this is not something I'm doing, but I'm craving to get back there. Reading, again, this is your personal development. Um, and then the last one is scribe. Since I've added this to my daily routine, I just do like a couple minutes at night. I just write about what I'm thankful for, something that was good in my day. Because if you can put yourself in that state before you go to bed, then think about how you'll wake up. And also think about how you'll sleep. Tony Robbins has something very similar to this. He calls it five minutes to thrive. So number one, if you go to any Tony Robbins event, he does something what's just called how to change your state. So if you're ever in a place where you're kind of feeling like down or tired or not ready to kind of move forward, you're going to laugh again, but stand up and you got to shake your booty. <laughs> Makes me laugh every time, but think about it. If you stand up and you jump around and you kind of shake your booty or dance a little bit, can you still be in a really bad mood? Probably not. You're going to at least laugh at yourself, if not release a few endorphins. Another um, trick he uses is called flooding yourself. So you are going to sit there with your eyes closed and you're going to think of a moment that you are really proud of yourself. And the way he describes it is feeling like it's far away and it's coming at you and it almost hits you. Like it's that feeling of like when you, I don't know, won the spelling bee. It doesn't have to be like right now as an adult. It can be anything through your life. A moment that you were really proud of yourself. And then you're going to do another moment where you felt really grateful. You know, maybe like you can remember when your children were born, like that moment where you were just flooded with that emotion. And you go through these different, you know, basically you ask yourself, when was the moment I felt really amazing? And you keep hitting yourself with those memories of all through. And then all of a sudden, when you just maybe even do this for like 10 to 20 seconds, your state has changed and you feel differently about yourself. Again, he also uses the incantations and visualizations. And anytime you're starting to feel down, you need to get yourself back in that state. Another thing I do, especially as a busy mom, is he calls it like a brain dump. And I'm not sure if any of you do this, but before you go to sleep, you know, like any night, you have to write down what has to happen first thing. You have to work from a list because if you just wake up and your kids are still sleeping or you have like 20 minutes before your husband is awake and you just sit there and stare at your screen, are you moving your business forward? Are you scrolling through Facebook and thinking, okay, what am I going to post about? Or what do I have to do first? You have to work from a list. I also, in the last month, I guess I did this at the end of the year last year, I went through what I want every day to look like. Because a big goal of mine this year is to be as present as possible with my children. I made very specific blocks of time of when they're not at school or when we're not at an activity that my phone is put away. You cannot be a slave to your phone. You can't be a slave to Beachbody. That is not what we do. That is not why we signed up to do this. So with that being said, you know you have to get up early like we talked about. You already know what your to-do list is because you wrote it down the night before. And then you have those small sections during the day and then also at night that you have set aside to you know, respond, to be able to engage with the people on your page, with your coaches, with things like that. So you're going to have that daily routine. You have a weekly routine of what you set up. And then you also have the monthly routine. I'm not sure how Lindsay runs it with you guys or how your typical schedule is, but for me, my typical monthly schedule is challenge groups the first and third Monday of every month. And the second week of every month is a 
coach sneak peek or, you know, something like that, sharing about the opportunity and opening it up to my downline. And then the last week of every month, that last Monday is when I run my free clean eating groups so that we can move right into um, them being able to know about the sales that start the next month. And then I can hit success club 10 sometime by the middle of the month, really early on. Number two is Always be working on you. This is something that's one of our vital behaviors. It's so important. Otherwise, you will start to plateau and that escalator climb will seem harder and harder. So as soon as you get to Emerald, you have, or as soon as you get one coach, right, you have to start that team page. Even if it seems silly and you're only talking to yourself for a while, if you're not flexing that leadership muscle and maybe grabbing things from Lindsay's team page or from other you know, larger groups that you're a part of, if you're not doing that, you're not seeing yourself as a leader. And if you're not seeing yourself as a leader, no one else is going to see you as a leader either. So fake it till you make it when it comes to things like leadership, especially in the beginning. Another thing I highly recommend is full-on immersion. So I personally went to Tony Robbins last year. I highly recommend UPW. Beachbody actually gets big discounts because a lot of our top coaches really enjoy Tony Robbins too. There's no kickback I get or anything like that. It's more just something I firmly believe in. And I've used a lot of the things I learned there with a lot of my customers. I have one customer who's lost 113 pounds over the last year. And then I have six who've lost more than 50 pounds just in the last seven to eight months. And I feel like a lot of it is using these techniques that I've learned from Tony Robbins. So you have to get there though. It can't just be you listening to a webinar. You can also do a lot of things like this by going to leadership events, like where Lindsay and I'm at. Even if it's at the bar, you are still in full immersion with other leaders who are pushing themselves, who have great ideas, where you get to share in you know, regards like this. And then the third thing is you have to break those negative patterns. How are you talking to yourself? Do you say like, I'm going to be an elite coach this year? Or, oh my gosh, there's no way I can be an elite coach. Or are you saying things like, I'm just going to, you know, scroll. I'm going to get up and I'm just going to kind of look through Facebook. How much are you watching TV? Are you going all in with your workouts? I'm not saying you have to be perfect, but you do have to be aware of when you are doing these things that are not helping your business, that are not helping your family or your personal development. You have to recognize them and then move forward with how to get rid of them. Okay, number three to really make this year huge is follow-ups and adding more value. How many of you are doing freemiums? It's something that's so easy. It literally can take you five minutes to do, especially if you do free clean eating groups or you have any workout things that you can put together. Your email list is something that you have to grow this year. Whether or not it's through just a simple Google form that's linked to your like page or whether you know it's something that you're also like, I have everyone now that's wanting to sign up for a challenge group or do anything with coaching, they go to you know a landing page immediately on my blog. I don't even blog very much. It's more like more just for landing pages at this point. But now that they go there, I have their email. I have all of their goals. I have things that have worked for them and not worked for them in the past. I also have their phone number and their Facebook page. Because how many people comment or like on what you do, especially as you're growing your business, and then you have no way to get a hold of them because they either don't see your message or whatever it is. Now you have a whole variety of ways to, to uh, get to, in contact with them when you need to. And with this being said, now that you have their email, you can do really simple things like a monthly newsletter or, you know, every two weeks, send a recipe or send just a picture of a, you know, of, of a post that did really well that was motivational. Adding little tiny amounts of value and then helps these people who have not bought from you, but now have gotten, you've gotten their email, they start seeing, you know, those seven to 10 touches or those seven to 10 views that they need to see before they really are ready to buy. You're helping that along because you're adding value in their life. People say no to you because they don't really get what you're doing and they don't see the value in what you're doing. So getting your emails and having a freemium is a really simple way to add value and to work on that relationship without it taking a ton of time on your end. So with that also, how do you add more value? Because your ultimate niche market are people just like you because they get you, they trust you, they understand you, they either want to be just like you or they want to be your best friend, right? So you have to think about when you're going through your day, what do you wish you could get more information about? You know, like, 
how to be more organized, ways to work out with your kids, healthy recipes or time management or saving money. You know, think through those things where you're like, oh my God, I wish I could have someone do that for me. Those are the small things you need to be posting on. Getting your coaches started off right. This is something I feel like every coach kind of has had their up and down with, whether you're a brand new coach or whether you're like a rock star, you know, three time 15 star, you're always kind of looking at how can you really get your coaches off to that best start. And it always starts with their why. If you're able to really help share what your why is and then work with them on, it has to be more than I really want to help people or I want to lose some weight or I want to make some more money. It has to be more than that. You know, those can be the main kind of umbrella things, but then you have to learn how to dig deeper with your coaches and your prospects to really be able to share that. And those breadcrumbs of what your why is should be how you're sharing about the business every week. If you listen to the, bon, you know, to the National Wake Up Call a couple weeks ago with Bonnie, she focuses on this, that almost every post she does is a breadcrumb of how amazing coaching can be. And you also have to talk to your new coaches about, how to go all in. You have to gauge where they are, but then this is the conversation you also have to have with them. If you want this, you make that decision today and you are an all in coach, and then you make your mind up that you're not going to be quitting. Okay, small steps to success. These are the way that you will build your business and help your team build their business, which obviously that's where the income growth comes from. It doesn't come from selling 50 challenge packs. Well, that would be nice. That is a lot of hustle. What you have to focus on are those five gold ships like we talked about. And the way that you attract those gold ships is consistency within your business. Best way to build consistency within your business is to hit success club every month, no matter what, whether you're calling your grandma on day 31 at 10 PM and saying, grandma, I really need you to sign up because there's no way I'm not hitting success club this month. That's what your mindset has to be. It is a no matter what, you don't care who you're signing up, but you are going to hit success club. As soon as I made the decision to start hitting success club 10 as a minimum every month, that's when my business grew to six figures very quickly because my coaches saw it and then they started wanting to build for success club 10 every month too. I always laugh when people are like, okay, I'll be an emerald in six months. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> Being emerald is a decision, period. It is not something that needs to be like worked into. You make your mind up, you can be an emerald tomorrow. We all know that. People don't like hearing that, but literally emerald is a decision. It's finding one person that wants to do the discount. One person that says, okay, I don't think you're completely crazy for doing this. I want to do it with you. And then obviously I always recommend signing up a spouse or a family member as that second person. But once you make your mind up, you're emerald, you can be emerald tomorrow. You can be emerald in an hour. Diamond is a mindset. Again, some people set off this long goal of wanting to hit diamond. Once you make your mind up that you are going to be diamond, it is a steady growth aspect of it. For example, Brandy Botts was diamond in 21 days. And she also, with that being said, was the fastest person to become a millionaire in the Millionaires Club within Beachbody. I have a feeling those two are correlated because she just has that mindset of success and growth and working with her coaches. So you also can't stop at Diamond. I know I didn't talk about this, but Diamond is really not the be all end all. Once you really get to two star, that's when your business is a true business, is an income that will continue to grow. Whether or not you work 10 hours a day or whether some days you only have a half an hour to put your three to five posts in and respond to some people. So remember to always be constantly looking for at least that two star, especially with you and with your downline coaches. Each month, as you're adding those coaches, your goal should be to help one to two of those new coaches hit success club. And then the next month, those one to two, you know, those coaches hitting success club. As you do this each month, this is how your team grows to an elite team because you are growing each month, those people hitting success club, they're helping their downline, they're helping their downline do it. You're continuing to kind of grow that success club mentality of helping at least three people that gets their Shakeology paid for, you know, that also just continues your team to, to grow in a way that helps everyone on it. I also heard a statistic this week, and forgive me if I'm completely, if I'm a little off on this, but something like 70%, or I think it's higher than that, it was 80% of coaches that hit success club within their first three months never quit the business. That's pretty interesting, huh? So if you can get your coaches 
to see the value in what they're doing and to get their Shakeology paid for, for the first three months, they're lifers. You know, there would be something much bigger to have them quit. Duplication within your team. This is a big focus of mine this year, quality and duplication. You don't have to come up with some brand new crazy ideas on how to make it work. It has to be a lather, rinse, repeat that you're doing consistently so then your coaches don't say, oh my gosh, that is the hardest thing. There's no way I can do that. I'm not as smart or I'm not as you know, original as Lindsay is. Like it has to be okay, Lindsay can do this, she can do this, I can totally do this. And I, that's what I try to really talk to my coaches about, that this is not some like crazy reinvent the wheel. This is a uh, find what works, teach it to your downline, teach it to their downline. And as soon as you're three deep, that means that you've truly mastered the duplication and then your team is now teaching those three levels deep and it's just continuing to grow all by itself without you having to have your hands in any of it. Okay, work smarter, not harder, and hold yourself accountable. As your team grows, this is something you must do. Don't get me wrong, you're still going to have to work hard. And if you want to be a top coach, you need to be working harder than anyone else. But that means that you have to be focused on where are your talents. You can't be spending two hours doing success club call outs you know, once a week. Little things like that, if you can delegate, for example, like Elance is a really great way to find an assistant at a really affordable price where you can say, hey, here's the data, put this into a really pretty graphic for me. And it's typically anywhere from like three to five dollars an hour, which seems like you're really undercutting someone. But in general, um, a lot of the people in the countries that are doing this work, that's a pretty high quality of life compared to what you know they would be making if they weren't helping you. So just think through it that way. A lot of the things that take a lot of the busy work, that's what you can hand to an assistant. Another thing, for example, is I have been able to have someone now come help me with my kids because now I'm running kids around to a school and events and things like that. Like I needed help. And so I delegated so someone could be home to play with my kids while I'm taking my other child somewhere else. And then I can get an hour to work really fast while they're doing whatever activity. Um, Remove temporary non-essentials from your schedule. No one likes to hear this, but guess what? If you really want to move your business forward and be in a great place, you're probably going to have to give up on TV, give up on some social events with your, you know, with your friends or things that you do regularly. You have to scale back a little bit. Maybe even, you know, think about, you know, little things like having someone help you clean the house every other week. I mean, these little tiny things, you still have to make time for your family as a priority no matter what. But you have to then think, what are the things that are holding me back? And get rid of them. You have to be able to break those patterns. Another trick I learned is to do things in bulk, especially as a busy mom. No offense, I don't shower every day. You can judge me for that if you want to. But I'm lucky if I get a shower every two to three days. You know, sorry, it's kind of gross, I guess. But that's just me being honest. So when I do shower and a baby is napping and it's quiet, guess what? I'm going to grab like five shirts and I'm going to do photos for different things so that I can have 30 photos to work with through that next week or at least through those next few days where my hair slowly gets put in a ponytail and I have no makeup and there's snot all over my shirt. You know what I mean? So do things in bulk. When you have that time, do one to two training videos. See what the coaches that you admire, see the videos they're doing and do the exact same thing. Make it your own. Flex that leadership muscle. Add value to your coaches and customers. And just do those little one to two minute videos that help you grow and also help you add a lot of value. If you don't have a success partner yet, really get on the lookout to find one. I also have a life coach. This is something that has helped me to have someone that keeps me on track, that reminds me of what is your priority? Is it something to go for the big, shiny 10, 15 star? Or is it that you really want to build you know, an income for your family to then have this, this savings, this big pillow to fall on if we ever needed to? You know, or how much time are you spending with your kids? Like these things that are reminding you, but then challenge you at the same time. You need someone to do that. And it can't just be you in your own head. There is someone you have to be accountable to. I mentioned this earlier, but every Sunday, do that brain dump. When you sit down on Sunday and your kids are asleep and you've already spent some time with your husband or you're telling them you're going to spend time with him in an hour, think through of every single thing that you want to be doing in that next week. And I don't care. It's going to be everything, personal, professional, everything. 
And then you're kind of going to do an evaluation of yourself. What did I do awesome last week? What did I struggle with? What are the one to two areas I know I can and will improve on this week? And then you write down what is my focus on exactly what I'm going to improve on this week. Know your passion and priorities. While you might have this great to-do list, if, you, if there are things on there that aren't getting you excited to do them, then it's something that you have to consider removing because that passion of what drives you, like for me, I'm not a big fan of doing laundry, but one of my major passions is what, you know, to be a master of my home and to be able to give my kids and my business as much focus as I can. And while I don't like dishes or I don't like laundry, I'm not going to have an organized home where then I can really focus on those things. So to take that 10 minutes and say, okay, dishes done. You have to have a passion associated with whatever that to-do list is. So if you, as you go through that to-do list, if there's not something on it that you realize is working towards your bigger goal of what those priorities are that I mentioned to you earlier, those seven to eight things that really get you juiced, it has to come off the list. It can't be on there anymore. And you have to figure out a way to either get it off and why it's off or a way to make it have something that you're passionate about that gets you excited to do it. Okay, so this is my last slide, but the bottom right one is one that I have sitting on my desk looking at me just to remind me of what my priorities are. So if I start like zoning out and I can look at that and I can go, okay, that's exactly what I know I want to be moving forward. And I also have um, God after love, but you know, again, I'm not, I don't share a lot about, you know, that part of myself, um, not because I'm not proud of it. It's more just, I feel like I don't want anyone to have to feel like, they need to be a certain way as a coach, what faith or not. But this is my big focus, to be able to see that and say, okay, what are my priorities? This is it. And then just to have things around you. I don't know if you have a vision board, but I would really encourage you to do one so that you can look over. Mine is like right in my eyesight of, you know, a physical transformation. You know, I have the number 100 on there because I'd like to add 100 PS coaches. I also have, you know, numbers about how many, what, what coaches are pushing for elite this year. This is what I want for my whole downline and for my family. That's all on there so that I can look at it and recenter and refocus, change my state like we talked about in the beginning. But at the end of the day, you can either look forward and be like, oh, that's so far away. Or you can look back and say, I screwed up. There's no way I can do this. I failed at that. Or you can focus on your present right now. What are you doing? Is it helping you move forward? And being able to do that consistently to self-evaluate, then you will be in that constant state of growth to constantly be improving that I can attitude or that can I attitude and always be rocking it because you're always working on being the best version of yourself. So there we are. Anyone have any questions for me? That was a lot. So that was awesome. Thanks, girl. Yes. Lindsay and I bonded over our love of champagne. <laughs> So it was nice. It was so cool because we were like, I think we met through Emma. I think like Emma had it was Emma and Sarah, and they were, and then and then you came, and there was a couple other girls, and like we we all were hanging out in this area, and then the next day we were at the pool, and her baby came out, and I was like, oh my gosh! So she, <clears throat> when she says no excuses, she's not kidding. Like the babies came with to leadership they were there and they you know hang around the pool and stuff and while we were in meetings I would or who knows what they had, played around the hotel doing things <laughs> and, um, it was nice weather and then she had them when uh she was um I don't know what we were doing just having some downtime or something um and then and we were all out at the pool so um yeah so we uh, connected that way. And, um, I was like, no excuses, girl. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think my first summit, by the way, I had to like beg and plead for my, you know, my husband to come with me because we were living in Wyoming and summit was at Vegas in Vegas at this point, And I was seven months pregnant and we had a one and a half and a two and a half year old. And I said, we have to go. Like, I know we have to go. I've earned this ticket. We have to go. I wasn't even, I was a brand new diamond coach and there was a lot of tears and begging. And finally, like two weeks before we said, okay, fine, 
fine, we'll go. And, um, but that's what changed it. Like having to go, going to these events, like before I was like, okay, I don't really know what diamond is, but okay. And when you're there, it's like, am I going to be on stage? Yeah. Am I going to be in the millionaires club? Of course you see that it's regular people doing these really extraordinary things just through consistency and being able to see it. That's the best part. Yeah. So I took a ton of notes. Thank you. Um, I was reading the, um, the present. Hell's <laughs> oh. creeping on you in the background over there. Hell <laughs> hung out with us at leadership too. Hell. Yeah. And then at the Arizona event, because I was there with my dad. Oh yeah. With Carl. Mm -hmm. Carl yeah. Right. I'm only there to buy drinks at the bar. Let's be honest. <laughs> know your value. I mean, we all have to have a job. It can be yours, right? Um, so yeah, so I, I love the finding five people because that is so key. Like it's, it's, I would say, I don't know if I would say it's easier to find the five, but that is truly like, they all say, if you find five people who are willing to run with you with this and go far, like you, you're, you're going to go your business is going to go really far. Mm -hmm. So yeah. It's so not 50 awesome. people. It's five. Like the number is not some crazy crazy number it's it's easy finding them is not easy but the number is at least small and easy right right yes right okay does anyone have any questions before i just go yakking talking away because i'll talk all night <laughs> <laughs> me too <laughs> do you guys have any like um questions on like i would be i guess my question to you would be what is your day like what does your day look like? So you start your morning. Okay. With savers. I've just started, like I just read that book. My goal has been two to three books a month for the year. And I've, I did three in January, just listening to all of them. And I, so I started the miracle morning in January and that's been a big game changer for me. Um, Mondays, I try to get up at five every day. Doesn't always happen, especially when I have three in bed with me. But, um, so I start off at five and my morning, I actually wrote it down just so then I can then say, okay. And I set a timer. That's another big thing. So at 5am, I try to wake up. I do my 30 minutes of personal development. Then like before anything else, between 5:30 and six, I schedule all my posts. Um, and for the day I use buffer. That's how I do it. And then I also like, for example, Thursday, I look in my you know, online office, I say. So then at six, I check in, check into my challenge groups. I start moving through my follow-up list. I start those three new conversations. And this is from six to seven. I have a timer or at seven o'clock, I stop. I then start moving through my email and my messages. Um, at seven o'clock, my kids are up, the phone's away, and we do our morning. And then um, I take I take my young, my middle child to school. I try to get my workout in, or at least I'm doing PT right now. So that's when I do my PT. And then I do, in the middle of the day, I try to do a post in my group, like on Thursdays and my personal group, I try to do something that's encouraging or motivating. Um, and then I also click through my groups, my favorite groups. I, um, oh, I don't know if any of you guys know this, but like Darren Daly, Darren Hardy, he'll send an email or a text to you every day with like a quick little video. And that's something you can easily post in your group. And it's also like a two minute clip that can kind of get you reset for the day. There's a whole bunch of new things, but they always apply. Um, and then I guess once I do bedtime with the kids, that's when I move back through completing my, you know, completing my emails and follow-ups, any messages, checking back in with my pages for engagement. And then I, I hate doing this because I love my coaches, but I've, since I've implemented this, it's been big for me of saying, don't message me. Like, I'm not going to respond to you at all during the day. If it's an emergency, you can text me, but also I will respond to your email after eight o'clock. But until then, you can ask in the group page. I also have a new coach chat that all of my new coaches are in so they can learn from each other. And that's taken a lot of the burden off me as a leader to help your leaders to know that they have to turn to everyone else first, that you will not respond to them. You are not a slave to your phone. As soon as that phone dings, you're all over it, right? Like that's not how you can really grow your business with having priority on your family. You have to set very specific hours and times for that. I've also um, 
created one-on-ones for my leaders. So if you are a top volume or success club earner or you're a star diamond, we do have a, we have a one-on-one call set up for 20 minutes every week. Otherwise I do these mastermind calls with my, um, with my downline, with my entire downline. If they say they want to work with me and they, I know their goals, then we do a 30 minute call once a week with three to five other people. So then again, my time is valuable. Your time is valuable. We are going to talk on this day at this time for a half an hour. If you're not there, then you're not there. But you know, as soon as you start treating this like a business and they respect them, their time and treating it like a business, then you're, then both of your businesses grow and they can also teach it to their downline. So those are sprinkled in um, throughout the day. There's a really great video Sarah Try did. It's called How to Build Your Biz in 20. And she very specifically goes through how to build your business in 20 hours a week and being very direct with those that hour and those times that you do get to work and specifically what you should be doing. So for any of your coaches that are like, I don't know what to do. I have an hour, but I don't know what to do. I would really direct them towards that. It's a really informative video. Okay, cool. That is awesome. Sarah's got some good videos. She's she's quite good at training about things like that. Yeah, she is. Okay, so we see some questions in the chat. Oh, yes. I get distracted by the chat, so I can't even look. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll be like talking, and then I'm like, squirrel. Okay, yes. What is the name? Okay, so the one about the five gold ships, it's called the 45 second napkin presentation, which seems like a silly name, but um, I got it through Kindle. And if you get like the enhanced version, which is the exact same price as the regular one, you have his videos in there at the beginning of every chapter where it's like this oldish guy in a tropical shirt telling you about something, but it's still a way to kind of break it up. And he explains it a little bit better. Um, I would highly recommend reading that Miracle Morning for the Network Marketer. I think that's that one's an awesome book. Thanks, Katie. Um, yes, five people, and then yeah, my coach. She's she's crazy, but she like literally she doesn't spend all this time on the business. When she does work, she is like zero. You know that focus is so direct. Nothing else is getting in her way. How do you sign up for the text from Darren? I would just type in like Darren Daily. I think. Or you can go to even his website, like Darren Hardy. It's probably darrenhardy.com. And it's very specific how to sign up for it. Oh, the video name, the Sarah Try. So it's her name is spelled T-R-Y. And it's called How to Build Your Biz in 20. Or Building Your Biz in 20. You'll see it. It's one of her top training videos. And she has another one called um, Building a Killer Contact List. That's a pretty good one, too, how she sets it up. It's pretty simple. All right, cool. Do we have any other questions for Wendy Jo? Do you go by Wendy Jo or Wendy? Wendy jo. People call me both in general. It's Wendy, but I don't know. I do both. You do both? <laughs> I do. I think when you have an easy name, like middle name, like J-O, people just sometimes add it on. And, you know, my dad and my grandma always call me Wendy Jo. So it's an endearment term, right? Awesome. 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 Cool. Well, thank you. It looks like we have and no other questions. Everyone's so quiet. <laughs> no, come on, you guys. Ask me questions so I don't feel like I just talk to myself all the time. <laughs> oh, who else is going on the cruise? Who's going on the cruise on here? Anyone? I don't know if any of these guys are. A lot of them got stuck on the waiting list. Kale um, Reed's raising his hand in the background. <laughs> See you there. Thanks, Karen. I appreciate that. Are you taking my kids on the cruise? I'm actually not. I um, had initially oh, planned to when I was married, but now that I'm a single mom, I am taking my best friend and the kids are staying at home with their dad because there's no way I'm taking three kids on a cruise by myself. Like, that would not be a vacation at all, especially because they're one, three, and five. So I say that nicely, but um, no, this will be a little vacation for mom, and I'm looking forward to it. So you're hearing the same thing I am, that if I take them on a cruise, I'm only bringing half of them back. <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, when your kids are older, I get it, or you just have one, 
But I mean, if any of you have three young children, you know, it's not a vacation at all, taking them anywhere with you. It's, it's a lot of work. So yes. Especially when the coaches are around you and want to chat, chat, chat and hang out. Right. Yeah. You're chasing someone. Yeah. There's always something happening. So this will be, this will be my first vacation really away from them. Is this ever. your success club trip? Is this my first? Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. I know. They're so much fun. I'm looking forward to it. I think. Yes. And then bringing my best friend, like she's hilarious. So I have a feeling she'll fit in quite well. Yeah. We'll have a good time. The worst part about the cruise though is like, we're like out to sea and all we can do is call each other from our, our room you know, oh, we'll right. leave our rooms. So once, you know, we'll be on one end of the boat. We're like, how do we get a hold of? Like my phone doesn't work. It's like when you're back in college, I, maybe I'm dating myself here, but you only had dorm phones. Like I didn't have a cell phone when I first got to college. So you had to either write on someone's like board outside of their door or, you know, you had to call and then wait. Yeah. Yeah. And the boat and just have like a meeting spot. It was, I was, when I wanted to take all my coaches, we went um, to the Stingray City at the last cruise, and I took them all, and I was doing this, we had to sign up at the middle area, and I'm like, come to this area, <laughs> and they literally were walking by, I'm like, yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. come over here, I need your name, I need your place. <laughs> oh, it's so crazy, it's so much fun, but it's so crazy, because you just can't get a hold of anybody. <laughs> Right. So you just meet a lot of new people, which is yeah. always fun. You never know who you're going to meet at these events. Yes. For example, I creepers and I have to keep them away from her. So, so true. There's no creepers. It's all beach body coaches. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> in general. <laughs> oh my. It's going to be a huge boat. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Huge boat. No creepers on the east side. <laughs> right. You keep your distance. Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you again for inviting me to talk. You know, it's something that I think it's fun to be able to talk with other teams and then kind of get ideas, and then we can share what we're both doing. I enjoy it. Oh, and by the way, I am a really, like, open person about – really everything kind of going on in my life. Or if you want to message me and say like, I need help with this. I'm not sure what to do. I make time for anyone who messages me. I don't just like only work with my team. I work with anyone that messages me. So I mean it. If you want to talk to me about anything else going on, just shoot me a message and we'll chat. Well, that's nice of you. Thank you. Well, that's what other coaches have done for me, right? Like, that's what's great about what we do. Like, you don't have to be only work with people that are specific to you. Thank you, Nancy. I appreciate that. Um, are you coming back to Arizona? Yes, for my kids' spring break. I'm bringing all three of them. So I, th I think it's in April. I was actually at some I. It's on my to-do list because I have some passion behind that, <laughs> that check mark. I think, um, I think it's in April sometime. So I'll be staying in Scottsdale and Mesa between the two. So we usually come for like two weeks. Cool. And you bought a house in Michigan. I did just because my kids have a really good dad. And while I would love to live in Arizona, you know, he, he should be a part of their life too. Right. <laughs> so Thank you. Yes, John. I went to U of M. I'm a U of M athlete. So definitely go blue. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I know. Hale and I have talked about this. So don't worry. She We're all good. You're for Northwestern because she, you know, hangs out. I did. I also quit. So I graduated with an engineering degree from Michigan and then I was working in Chicago and then decided I wanted to go to med school, which is crazy, but I got into Northwestern has like a pre-med post-bac program. So I'm also a Northwestern graduate too, but and yeah. So, so we've just agreed to say go Big Ten. Go Big Ten. Exactly. Well, I'm cool with that. The older I get, the more cool with that I am. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it was harder. I couldn't have said that a while ago, but hey, look at all these Michigan fans on here. Well, Watch out. There's some Ohio State people too. I, I know. Hey, I lived in Cleveland. I did my time in that state for a good nine months, and that was good for me. <laughs> I did my time. 
I served my prison sentence in Ohio. Oh, hey, John, what do you think? I'm not going that far, but oh, it's funny, Steve. <laughs> you guys are Michigan fans living in Ohio. Good luck. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, I can't. I can say go Badgers. I'm cool with that. Funny. Oh God, and then you hey, got hell over what's, here. What's Ooh. really funny is there's some. There are some Ohio State fans that had to cheer for Indiana because they had a friend that played on them. How much tongue in cheek is that right there? <laughs> oh, yeah, not fun. But you got to do what you got to do sometimes, right? I'm telling you, Big Ten people are the best coaches. <laughs> oh, I know. I've talked about this uh, with a few other coaches too. I think I agree. I totally agree. <laughs> Maybe we're just biased, though. Who knows? And we enjoy champagne. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big one. Only one in Ohio and Athens. It's funny. Oh, all righty. You know Anyone Anybody have any questions? And sees Wendy Jo, be sure to buy her a nice glass of champagne. Thank her for her time. And when you come <laughs> to leadership next year, we'll be sitting right. at the bar, the same bar with our champagne. Yeah. The same area. <laughs> champagne. <laughs> sounds like all we do is drink there is more than that i mean it i'm on the um ultimate reset right now because i can't work out and so there has not been any champagne but i'm on my last week so <laughs> i'll make it i'll make well, it tell Lindsay about the ultimate reset not a good idea i haven't been on any champagne either so <laughs> <laughs> when we travel then it's like hmm haven't had this in a while <laughs> all right well thank you so much um thank you. i recorded this if you want it i'm sure um and then for anyone who missed this call this was great i took a lot of notes i really appreciate you taking time with us tonight i hope you have a great night guys thank and you yes i'll see you guys soon in like five weeks right oh uh, boy five weeks okay right it's like the 12th whatever you say it's like I've already put my vacation time request in, huh? We're all staying at the same hotel the night before, right? Yeah, we are. Well, okay. I'm going to with Emma. <laughs> it's going to be... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that means. Oh, boy. Awesome. <laughs> okay, guys. I'm going to get a little bit of work done before my 11 o'clock bedtime because I'm trying to go to bed early. Not all good right. at that, but I'm fine. All okay. Right. Talk to you guys later. Thank Bye. you. Bye.